Hello, everyone, and welcome to Moon Ride. Today's will be a political reading. I'm going to take a look at the Trump election interference case. Also, if you would like a free reading from the amazing Jacinta, just put a message here with a little heart, and we will pick one person from the list to get a free tarot card reading. She has been trained by the amazing Lena Rodriguez, so you can be sure she's very good. Also, if you'd like to take a look at some trans channeling work I've been doing with a group of fantastic trans channelers, check a look at the Cosmic Connectors Collective. Finally, if you would like a reading from me, just go to my website. I have different uh, readings for you to uh, choose from, including past life regressions. Just take a look. Okay, Spirit, show me what's happening in the Trump trial. Mm. Well, Trump is really being tested, isn't he? You can just see a ball of hot flames, unable to uh, control himself, really just, this is the most incredible punishment. It is like sending an adult to the corner in front of their peers. He can barely stand it. You could just see him just trying to break out and um, do something crazy. Yeah, I don't, uh, I would not like to be uh, the judge. Juan Mershon, it is, um, honestly, that's a dangerous job right now. Uh, it will be dangerous, whatever he decides for that judge. I think it is very uh, noteworthy. So here's Trump fuming. And there's a lawyer worrying. The lawyer is worried. He's worried that he's going to lose the case and Trump will take it out of him. He's worried that uh, Trump will do something wrong and the lawyer will uh, be reprimanded somehow. He's not uh, really happy about this situation. You wonder what these guys are thinking when they go work for Donald. But what they're thinking is this will advance my career. I'll be famous. That's the jury thinking. Really, they're shocked and horrified. You know, there's a certain segment of people you can't blame them. They're just like, look, I, I can't take the news. I just don't want to watch it. Those are the people they picked for this trial because anybody who watches the news won't be on this jury because they'll have an opinion about Trump based on what they have seen him do. So they pretty much picked a jury of people who never watch TV. They just like literally don't know anything about politics. And I'm just seeing them all go, oh my God, like they can't believe that they're seeing this. They're really like <clears throat> taking their breath back and they're um, actually a little bit afraid of him. So they are also afraid of the consequences of how they're going to be treated by Trump after the trial. Because then there'll be no hold back. I mean, they can, Trump, I think, can say what he wants once the trial is over. There's one person on the jury who just keeps looking at his phone. Why are you looking at your phone? I don't know why he's looking at his phone, but it's almost like he's nervous or he's, he's counting something. He's counting the number of things that this has happened. I think he, the juror might be counting the number of times that the judge has told him to stop threatening the jury. It's like, he's, not, he's now on number 10. What's, it's like, where, where are we gonna stop here? This jury would say, I, look, I don't feel safe here. This isn't a reasonable trial because I don't feel safe. Uh, I don't, I know that if I uh, am, uh, if I find him guilty, that my life will be in danger and that of my family. This is not safe. And that juror is thinking twice. It's like, well, maybe I shouldn't, should not find him guilty. It has nothing to do with the trial. It has to do with their safety. So I'm just looking at this juror. I'm like, are you going to do that? Are you going to let him go? 
No, he isn't. He says now he isn't, but he's worried. And he's worried that someone else would. It definitely has a feeling of being a man. And it just kind of tells you how the men and the jury are thinking, just like, I have to think of my life and the lives of those around me. It's not about the situation. I can see women jurors and they are thinking quite differently. They have a lot of empathy for uh, the, those who are testifying. And it's more less about fear and a little bit more about empathy. So I've seen Stormy Daniels and uh, how uh, she's being very brave and showing up and talking about these things. They can empathize with uh, Trump's wife. And, you know, there's there's no sympathy going on here for Donald. There are political machinations and people worried about their futures, but no one likes him. So let's just look at him. Are you guys going to find him guilty? I'm just looking at all the jurors. One is nodding their head, absolutely. One is not entirely sure. They're making up their mind. They haven't decided yet. So I'm just going to look right at this juror. What are you going to decide? I cannot tell. They have not decided yet. They are, to their credit, going with the evidence. They are willing to look at more evidence to make a decision. There are people talking to that person and telling them that they uh, should let Trump off. It's all political. Somebody is trying to impress that idea on them. But there's very much, this jury is very much being transformed by this trial. There are uh, moments where they really have to step up and um, take risks, their own lives included. So I do see a juror come forward and go like this, like, no, you know, guilty. And they look like the head juror. There's, there is somebody that they'll have to persuade and convince. So will the jury find him guilty? So I get a yes. And I do get that they will find him guilty on both counts. And one being, like, there may be more than two, but one being the idea of giving the money to the porn star, the other being the idea that he did it to uh, alter the election. It's not an easy conclusion. It may take a while for them to deliberate. The real question, I think, is will and what will the judge's punishment be? So, Anderson, you're going to send him to jail. Well, I get that after the guilty plea, or after the guilty conviction, there's some amount of time, perhaps, before uh, the punishment is levied, perhaps even a month. And one thing that's good about that month is then uh, Trump won't be able to attack those witnesses during that month. And Rashawn will be watching very closely to see if he does do anything like that. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do one more time? He says one finger. So are you going to put him in jail? So I see Trump go to, going into the jail, but then I see him coming out again right away. And he goes, Whew. I go to jail or not. My impression now is I see him go in and go out. 
it, it might be a very short time in jail, like one night or something like that. Or there might be something more, hmm, just more complicated than we're expecting right now. Like Trump goes to jail, then he violates, then he goes to jail again. I know that I saw before that Trump would be in jail, but I don't know whether it will be because of this case or the many other cases against him. This case, I don't necessarily think that he will go for long. So once more, can you show me? Will Trump go to jail? It might even be that he is uh, sent to jail, but a higher court overturns that judgment. And so it is uh, a risk, but not uh, not a brief. Now, I would love to tell you otherwise. I would love to tell you that Trump is going to jail for this. And I think he should. But I think I see one more shot going like this. There's no more that I could do. Or maybe the punishment is sort of like a, he cannot justify jail time for this particular crime because the you know results are not as severe. Perhaps the jury does not uh, actually indeed convict him of everything. There is a little bit of a, I'm not so sure with this. That is, there, there seems to be something a little bit ambiguous here it does not seem right now that he will go to jail for more than a few days on this uh, crime. But what will the public think? That's the most important question here. Well, there are going to be the diehards, and you know the Trump supporters, which just they they're just you know in in for a penny, in for a pound. They're just never going to change their mind. I think that's thirty five percent of the people. But um, you know, these are just people who carry resentment. And the fact that they carry resentment means they will do anything to justify their resentment because they don't feel like they've been heard. Some of them are just, you know, conservative and, you know, unable to change for the future. That, that's just, that's just who they are. There's kind of a 15% of people who are thinking, you know, Practically speaking, it's really not good to have uh, this this president. It, it like we've they're getting to the point where they've kind of seen it all, and they're no longer entertained by Trump. It is, you know, it's almost like saying, "Look, you know, we're adults now. We can't play these games anymore. Let's be realistic." There are probably 45% of the people who are absolutely not ever uh, going to support Trump or that they're going to come out in opposition to this. So it does not look good politically for Trump. And I think that is the importance of this trial. It does have political implications. Trump is showing how he is a violent person and he will um, endanger the juries. And he's showing what kind of, you know, kind of low class behavior he has engaged in. It looks criminal, it looks nefarious. It's like that 15% of people being the most important are sort of coming to a reality that uh, Trump will not work as a president and that there's too much risk attached to following him. It's sort of like they wanted to make a point with the government saying, hey, you better start addressing people's needs. Uh, otherwise, we're going to vote for a crazy person. So it's sort of like their message has gotten through or enough so that they're ready to move on and uh, kick Trump out. Thanks so much for watching.